innovation seldom happens in a vacuum. You build on other people's ideas. You solve problems creatively and you figure out repeatable ways to do that. Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing world changers in the creative, social impact, and earth conservation spaces. If you like what you hear on this episode, you're going to want to check out the bonus mini episode you can access if you become a member of my coffee club. If you do, you'll get access to bonus episodes, new art, new writing, and other fun benefits at buymeacoffee.com slash Isolde T. See the show notes for more details. And now let's get on with the show. Hi, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thank you so much for being here. The podcast is going to be changing some. Yes, it's true. You might have already noticed that there are fewer episodes per week. I wanted to distill things down so that you're only getting the best of the best. And I just finished the Artist's Way project with the excellent Alan Fessenden, Megan Basilis, and Sergio Giovanni. And that was an amazing experience. But now Tuesdays are going to be used for uh, other things and more about that coming as Creative Earthlings takes on its next shape. I'm very excited about that. So I am going to be doing episodes two days a week from now on. Monday's always going to be an interview with some really cool and amazing peak performing innovator. And Thursday is going to be about creativity and innovation and things that you need to know if you want to be a creative or a creative problem solver or just someone who is out to change the world, uh, that's going to be the Thursday episode. So I'm hopeful that you're going to enjoy all of this stuff. This is what is going to be happening as soon as the Speak From Within episodes are done. I know, things are all up in the air. And today, of course, is Wednesday, so (laughs) it's even weirder. Anyway, so let's get on to the topic of today's episode. Normally, I talk about innovation today and into the future, but in addition to looking forward, I think we can also learn from innovations of the past. Here's an example. I'm an astronomy nerd, and if you've been following me for any long length of time, you know that I worked at NASA for many years, and you also know that I love, love, love the Earth. So I started thinking about when people thought the Earth was flat thousands of years ago, and the ancient Greeks who designed an innovative experiment to prove the Earth is a spherical shape, or an ellipsis, but an ellipsis, an ellipse, (laughs) but we'll get to that later. The Earth's curvature describes the idea of the Earth as a spherical object. The earliest documented thoughts about this concept, or at least that the Earth wasn't a flat disk, go back to around the 5th century BCE. Now, here's what's cool. Eratosthenes, it's a hard thing to say, of Serene determined Eratosthenes. It's really hard to say. Eratosthenes of Serene determined that the spherical nature of our planet uh, was such by measuring the shadows of sticks on midsummer noon. By looking at the difference in those shadow lengths, he then calculated a rough circumference of the Earth. Amazing, right? Way later, Ferdinand Magellan and Juan Sebastián Elcano's circumnavigation, somewhere around between 1519 and 1522, showed us that you can go basically where you (laughs) started, you can end up there. So the idea that the Earth is an ellipsoid goes back to Isaac Newton, who talked about it in, in his Principia. But let's go back to Eratosthenes. How did he do it? How did he figure out the Earth wasn't flat? He likely did it this way, as I said above. On the summer solstice at at local solar noon, he measured the shadow a stick cast. And he had someone hundreds of miles away do the exact same thing to the exact same length stick at the exact same time. You won't be surprised to learn that the shadows were different lengths. If the Earth were flat, the shadows would be the same length anywhere you measured them. And since they were different, Eratosthenes was able to deduce the Earth was spherical. And then... Based on the lengths of the shadows and the distance between the two measurements, he did the math to calculate the circumference of our planet. How amazing is that? With sticks and shadows and a little bit of math, he was able to figure all of that out. That's 
innovation, but it doesn't stop there. In order for Newton to figure out his ideas on the elliptical shape of the Earth, he had to climb onto the shoulders of a few giants. And would Magellan have decided to circumnavigate the globe without some of the thinking that the Earth was indeed round or spherical and that he'd eventually get back to where he started? See, that's the thing. Innovation seldom happens in a vacuum. You build on other people's ideas. You solve problems creatively and you figure out repeatable ways to do that. You might determine other cool ways to get where you're trying to go, like with the the whole uh, elliptical sort of shape of the Earth. You could look at the other planets or, uh, well, let's take a second, in fact, and think about if you look at all the other planets in the solar system and all the other planets that we can see with telescopes, they're all kind of round, aren't they? How would it be that all of these other planets are round or elliptical and we are the only flat one? That doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So let's let's look at it that way. Or you can watch a lunar eclipse and you can see what the Earth's shadow on the moon actually looks like. It doesn't look flat. It looks round. But I've always been partial to the shadow experiment. It's easy and fun. And it'll take you back to the work and ideas of some of those early innovators. And if you take their knowledge and apply your own particular brand of ingenuity and curiosity, I I wonder where you'll innovate, right? That's the thing is if you take an idea that's come before and you build on it and you see where your curiosity takes you, then you can innovate your own thing based on sort of with a tip of the hat to what people have done before you. So you stand on the shoulders of giants, but you put your own stamp on it. And I think that that is a really amazing way of looking at this, right? If you stand on the shoulders of giants, you innovate with your own ingenuity and can make something completely different, yet something that can still be of great impact and of great help to all of those people who need the help and the planet and the animals. That's sort of the, you know, me, that's sort of my uh, nom de guerre. No, <laughs> that's the, that's my prime directive, right? Is to sort of work with and talk about ways that we can educate ourselves to save the planet, to save ourselves, to save the animals. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this very short foray into innovators of the past. We're going to have innovators of the past. We're going to have innovators moving into the future. It's going to be a really interesting thing to look at because creativity and innovation, as I said earlier, they don't happen in a vacuum. It happens when you collaborate when you get curious and when you get confident enough to try. So I I hope that you enjoyed the episode and I want to remind you that you can join the Coffee by the Water Club and be part of the community and also get some extra little bonuses. So uh, those bonuses are available only to the people who are members and the link to the Coffee by the Water Club is I should probably call it Latte by the Water Club because that's really what it is. But uh, because I drink lattes, not just straight coffee but anyway with oat milk of course so yeah if you decide to join me in the coffee by the water club you are going to get all sorts of bonuses and cool art that nobody else ever sees and bonus episodes bonus writing it's pretty neat and i'm pretty excited about it all right until next time this is isolde trachtenberg for the innovative mindset podcast reminding you to be bold be creative and most of all be kind Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2022. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind.